Welcome to Visionaries Global Media, your number one source for podcasting entertainment. Visionaries Global Media, envisioning excellence on a global scale. Band from Ringside. Tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast, WWE decides to Netflix and chill. Your boy goes to WWE, or fuck WWE, AEW Collision. Edge and Suzuki fight on Dynamite. And Vince McMahon. Come on out, you rapist. That and a whole bunch more tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast. <laughs> It only took 344 episodes, but God damn it, we switched the chops up, motherfuckers. Pay attention. It's on. <laughs> Ditch that nine to five. It's time to feel alive. Hello, Marks. Welcome to the Band for Ringside Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Bill Vagie, a.k.a. Carney Weinstein. <laughs> and sitting directly across from me, we have Jason Cornelius Bell. What's going on, GCB? To be fair in the USA. And on that note, we know that I'll have to ask the congregation to bow their heads as I read from the latest edition of the Man for Ringside Podcast, volume 344, chapter 3, verse 14. And the good spark saying, hashtag, boo the heels, it's all good, baby. Listen, share, subscribe, repeat the Holy Trinity of BFR. Nice AKA, by the way. Um, it's it's going to be a real interesting two hours. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I've been waiting to, to say this up all day for this shit. Let's do this shit, man. And out there in Portland, Oregon, we have none other than Two Beer Zach Pullman. What's going on, Two Beer Zach? Beer for West in the house. Uh, I started out pretty good, but I uh, picked the wrong day to get a Vince McMahon tattoo. <laughs> You know, you guys have been defending him and defending him and defending him. And I've been telling you, he's just not a good dude. He's just not a good dude. I'm like, why is Vince trending? Oh, shit. Uh, Plenty, plenty more where that came from. You know, I just want to, just a disclaimer, uh, right off the top, uh, you know, we here at BFR, and I know I speak for the boys when I say that we take allegations and we take the crimes that Vince McMahon is accused of very seriously. There is no doubt that we take them seriously. However, well, I shouldn't say however, and we are also going to make tons of fun of Vince McMahon. Oh, he yeah. has had, there is, if you can't make fun of a billionaire and drag him through the fucking mud when he is accused of the types of things that well, he is well. accused of, then sh- what the hell are we, what do we even have a wrestling podcast for? We ain't got no sponsors. We ain't got no advertisers. Nope. This is uncut <laughs> coming from your boys. <laughs> And we have the Royal Rumble this week. I didn't even fucking say that. We, we also had the Roy, it's Royal Rumble week. The, the, the best pay-per-view that there is oh my God. is the Royal Rumble, and that is coming up in two nights. So we also have your Royal Rumble predictions. Unreal. So, <laughs> Vince hijacking the Royal Rumble. <laughs> uh, man, you know Nick Khan ain't happy. So uh, you know what? Let's, uh, let's just get right into it. Let's oh, kick shit. it off with that three count. Oh, God damn that bitch. JCB, kick it off. We're going to start with good news on the WWE front before we, get, we start dragging poor Vince through the mud. The good news for WWE is that they got signed a monster-ass deal with Netflix, so Raw will be moving to Netflix. SmackDown is moving to USA, and then in a little bit of a surprise move, NXT is going to CW, so let's break it all down. Um, I guess this was from Tuesday or Wednesday, whichever day it was. Came, I'll just read it straight from the New York Times article. Netflix reached a multi-billion dollar 10-year deal for the exclusive rights of WWE's flagship weekly show, Raw, as streaming. Uh, the streaming giant broadens its offerings to live more content. Uh, the deal will bring Raw to Netflix starting in, uh, next January. Netflix and TKL Group, the WWE's parent company, in the, said in a statement Tuesday, Netflix will also own the rights to stream other shows, specials outside of the United States. 
10-year deal, $5 billion, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so let's break it all down. First and foremost, whoever has Netflix needs to DM me because I can trade you a sub of your choice, <laughs> whatever that might be. My first guess would probably be Peacock would be coming back your way. Um, but just to break it all down, obviously it's it's kind of a big deal just in the sense for people that don't have Netflix or like myself. Apparently the Netflix um, – Numbers jumped up. Let me make sure I say this right. 13.1 million subscriptions, the largest uh, fourth quarter gain in company history once this announcement came out. So obviously the WWE fans have come in abundance to sign up for Netflix in a he- ahead of time to make sure that they are on Netflix ready to go. That happened after the announcement? I'll read it straight from the article. Hours later, Netflix said in the earnings announcement that it it, it had added 13.1 million subscriptions for the largest fourth quarter gain in company history. It wasn't because of WWE, though. That's just 13.1 million, like, in their fourth quarter. Like, it wasn't like they announced it and 13.1 million marks just signed up for WWE. I go, I, yeah, that makes sense to me. I'll take it from the word of the uh, the BFR, the financial advisor. <laughs> I don't know. I think Mark Ordelon might have superseded you. He scooped you this week he on Friends of BFR. <laughs> Find us on Facebook, Friends of BFR. He did get his ass. <laughs> no question about it. So, obviously, that being the turning wheels of what how we watch Raw going forward of January 2025 will change. But I guess the just the bigger picture of it all is – $5 billion going to the WWE's pocket over the next 10 years. Um, it's not like they need more money. They're just printing cash at this point. Next, Well, this year will be the first year where they're going to Australia, Berlin, God knows where, you know, in, in the latter six months of 2024. So, I mean, WWE right now, at least on one side of the fence, ha- has had a pretty good week. Go ahead. Not, not on the other side of the fence. <laughs> We're going to get to it. Uh, Zach, what do you think about this? Uh, it, it's definitely uh, intriguing, and it kind of shows the landscape of overall just uh, entertainment because the reason you see a lot of declining numbers in wrestling is not necessarily because of wrestling. It's because of cable television. Like, fewer and fewer people pay for cable. I haven't paid for cable in 10 fucking years. Um, and I watch wrestling every single week. Uh, I just figure out a way. <laughs> so, um, it's, you know, people just don't want to pay for cable. And these rights fees are going up and up and up. And, I mean, the NFL, you know, everybody's getting record increases. And, I mean, this is pretty smart for Netflix. Um, it's a good deal for both sides. Uh, Netflix gets them locked in for a very long time. And if the rights fees continue to escalate, uh, that's good for Netflix because there's inherent value uh, built in there. And if they don't, um, it's still good for WWE because there's guaranteed money. Uh, Netflix can drop it after five years if they're not performing. But I imagine if you're looking to do live television, if you're looking to get into the live television game, wrestling is a fantastic property to acquire because it's every single week. It has a dedicated fan base. There's it's no sports esque. People still want to watch it live. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it, it absolutely is sports esque, and it has that that dedicated fan base. So yeah, they can dump it after five years if they're not performing. But I imagine they'll be performing. Raw is usually the number one entertainment television show every single week. Um, AW it, Dynamite is uh, usually the top three of entertainment shows uh, during the week, the non-sports. And, um, yeah, uh, you know, those are just the facts. And, um, you know, they got them for 10. They can also extend that for uh, another 10. So, you know, they got them locked in. I think there's there's a there's an increase, a built-in increase, if they extend it past the 10. But, uh, I mean, WWE's on Netflix for uh, the foreseeable future. And, I mean, I think it's a good fit. I'm happy. Uh, I've got... Netflix. I've had I've had Netflix since Disc, and I've always been a subscriber. I've never canceled it, and uh, not even for a single month. And um, this, I was actually kind of debating about it because I have a lot of other streaming services. So this will keep me on, and um, I think it'll generate a lot of subscriptions, new subscriptions for Netflix. Um, cool thing is, is you know the library 
and uh, also it being like a three hour show. Like I watched the Hulu version today and uh, I did not get to see Chad Gable and Ivar, which I'm sure was pretty, probably pretty dope. It was um, great. <laughs> yeah. Didn't get to see it because it wasn't on my version. So I watched it. Better than version. I anyway, anticipated for sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's enough, enough for me, but um, yeah, it's definitely a, a huge news story and I fully expect, USA, whenever SmackDown, uh, you know, they're done with their SmackDown deal. I imagine Netflix making a large bid for SmackDown also because they have it. They will have it everywhere else in the world. So um, that's one thing, too. As the resident financial uh, reporter here on uh, Band from Ringside, yes. uh, must must point out the caveat that this is not – they're not going from $265 million to $500 million a year just for Raw. This is all of the – um, the non-United States rights bundled together plus PLE, uh, you know, premium live events all together. So it's not necessarily, it's not like they're getting twice the money for just raw uh, in the United States. They're getting a lot of money for a lot of rights in a absolute fuckload of countries. Um, and uh, I think I might sign up for a VPN so that I can uh, just, pretend that I'm in one of those other countries and get, get all that shit on one, on one uh, streaming service instead of multiple. Anyway. When did SmackDown premiere on Fox 2019? Ugh. Or as I like to call it, the Kane Velasquez era. Mm. <laughs> it was 20, I think it was 2019. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. So, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. That's whenever dynamite started. And I feel like it was around the same time. So, I think that this WWE going to Netflix in 2024 is as big of a deal as WWE going to Fox primetime on Friday nights in 2019. I think that Netflix as a brand is like pretty ubiquitous in American culture, at least. And there's a lot of shit on Netflix that is in the cultural dialogue a lot. And a lot of stuff that's not very good sometimes, too. But, God damn, that F1 show, what's it called? Like, that F1 show, people talk about that show. People watch that show, and now F1 has, like, a new fan base off of that Netflix docuseries. WWE is made for this shit. There will be reality shows, supplemental entertainment, those documentaries. Man, when shit shows up on your Netflix, you are way more apt to watch it than you have to seek out Peacock to watch WWE. You don't have to seek out Netflix because way more people have Netflix than have Peacock. This is a massive, massive deal. And I don't want to get hyperbolical hyperbolic you knew what i meant yeah i don't want to get hyperbolical but (laughs) like this might be like kind of the future of wwe is basically you you watch regular wrestling which is like a docuseries anyway but it's a kayfabe docuseries and you put that alongside real docuseries and then that you're going to start fucking with storylines this there's a lot of different ways they can go with this and um Creative people can really do a lot, and way more eyes will be on it because it's on Netflix. I really think this is a massive deal. SmackDown moved to Fox on October 4th, 2019. Um, kind of piggybacking on what Zach was saying about... Cain Velasquez Day. <laughs> God damn, that was a... God, you remember all the Vincels defending that on Twitter? <laughs> oh, God, they really showed their ass. Man, that's like man, a prank man, man, man. to see how far they'll go. <laughs> oh, that sucked. <laughs> Never again. Um, picking back at what, what uh, Three Bear was saying about streaming services and, you know, the way this is going. Um, the, what was it, the Chiefs game this weekend was on Peacock. And oh, didn't have it, it was a mess, dude, because oh. I have Peacock and people use my Peacock. Yeah. But you can only have three devices on at one, one time. time. I had two different people text me and be like, you have to tell people to get off your Peacock so I can watch a Chiefs game. It's like, no, nah, dude. Figure it out. Figure it out. It's about to say, I don't give a fuck about the Chiefs, but ultimately. Just change, th- change your password. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> about to say, I'll fix you, motherfuckers. Ultimately, From Charlie Sheen 69. I think that's the way <laughs> that this all is going to go. 
WWE has kind of just jumped the line and just beat everybody to okay, we're going to you know we're going to do a streaming service with Netflix. I'm and telling you, it going. this is way bigger the for NFL, WWE than it is for Netflix. Watch the NFL do the same thing now because that now they've seen all the chaos that is in it too. So now people are going to want to watch their football teams the same way that we as marks are going to want to watch our wrestling. It's a bubble, man. It's going to burst at some time. At one point, people are just going to be like, man, fuck the Chiefs. <laughs> but I say, no, you saw that it's going to burst. You saw that shit work. Motherfuckers was coming out and when they wanted to watch the game, they were, they were trying to, you know, find a way around Peacock the same way people were trying to find a way around Netflix. This is the way that it's going to be moving forward. Streaming services, Netflix, Peacock, Hulu. If you don't got one, you better get one because ultimately this is where I think it's all going to go, especially on the way of sports. Uh, any other thoughts on the big deal, Zach? Uh, it's good for WWE once it's their – what is uh, one of their biggest kind of problems with, with the cable is they have an aging clientele. It's a lot of over 50s. And streamers are uh, more traditionally younger. So How is it going to work? Skewing yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, it's a, yeah, they get their, that younger skewing demographic. Yeah, because everybody that watches wrestling is our age. I think that's beginning to change, but in general it's true. Um, how's it going to work with commercials? I just think uh, they will likely run, um, com- like they'll still have commercials. Nick Khan said there will be commercials, but, um, hopefully they stop running commercials in the middle of matches because they won't have to hit times. Oh man. The stuff that they're going to do, like the Mountain Dew pitch black match. Fuck oh, off. Yeah. But it's going to be like the Bridgerton bra and panties match. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, <laughs> I'd watch that. I am no pervert. But I would watch it. <laughs> Advertisement for. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's all I got about that. We're not, you know. You know, we do have a business reporter and a journalist, but that's not the skew of the show, you know. So I don't know how much more we can say about this, but it is wild and it is big news. Fucking, I, we are in such an era. Of, <laughs> we are going through quite the era of pro wrestling right now. It is, uh, it's really something. I mean, don't you think? It's it's just wild what's yeah, going on now. Um, the quality, the quantity, Jesus. Yeah, do a little the movement of uh of the talent, the whole shebang. It's uh it's an amazing it, it and I'm not saying it's all AEW, but just on the WWE side of things, it's it's been just a wild last year and a half, two years. You know? Yeah, I think we can thank Cody for that. Let's get to that two count. <laughs> One, two, three. Bradley can. He's like the tiny domino. It's like <laughs> Cody, Vince wants. It's like the tiny domino is Vince wants Cody to wear makeup, and the big domino is WWE signs ten billion dollar deal with Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> like those fucking butterfly effects. Yeah, right. it really was. Thank you, Cody. Um, uh, two beer. What's the two count? We gonna talk about this, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, we got to talk about Vince, too. Sorry, my bad. Um, I was thinking that was a different count, but you're right. That's not a different count. Yeah. So, okay, so, Jason, tell us about Vince. Yo, boy. Jason, read the text messages from front to back, the entire things. It'll take, no, I'm kidding. It'll take, tw- it'll take, it'll don't take, fuck with me. it'll take 20 minutes. <laughs> I, was about to say, I was about to say, I had that shit up in five seconds. Don't be fucking with me. Tell the people what happened. Gonna, it would just, uh. Then Bill has a fucking lifetime worth of drops. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Come dripping out of all three holes. <laughs> god damn, Vince! <laughs> For those of you that don't know, that is not a joke. That is literally part of the text. Jason, tell the people what happened with Vince. So obviously, we had talked about this uh, 
before Vince got ousted, I believe this was in 2020 when this initial sexual allegation lawsuit came up and it was apparently settled, but apparently it wasn't settled because somebody didn't get their money and now the texts are coming out. Fucking just <laughs> shake out your ashtray, Vince. It was three million bucks. <laughs> you better pay this girl. <laughs> what the, the fuck, fuck dude? God damn. So obviously, I should say obviously, if you haven't been paying attention, the allegations have come out with receipts of text messages from this woman. I'm not even going to try to dig up her name at this point. And Vince McMahon. Um, I'm not even gonna read these tech messages. I just <laughs> no. Her name was we should say it. It was Linda McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't shit. I'm just. This gonna is read just a man texting his wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. Now you just put the image of Linda McMahon doing all that nonsense. Hard pass. Thank you. We still haven't told the people what happened. I'm just going to read it off the USA Today article, and then we can just go from there. A woman who worked for WWE and received a payout from the company has filed a lawsuit against WWE and Vince McMahon on Thursday that alleges that the wrestling company founder took part in sex sex trafficking and put her through extreme sexual (laughs) acts that were done with, quote, extreme cruelty and degradation. The former head of talent relations, John Laurinaitis, is also named in this suit. So I am no pervert. Um, apparently defecating on someone in the midst of a threesome might say otherwise, Vince, but we can talk about that. Not here to kink shame. Look, I'm just calling it, you know, it's calling it what it is. <laughs> Shit, you know. <laughs> Janelle Grant is the, no, the, yeah, that say your name. Yeah, the, the I mean, former it's empo- employee it's for WWE said that McMahon made her sign a non-disclosure agreement for about their relationship for an agreed amount of $3 million. However, Grant didn't receive the full payment for McMahon and wants to avoid the agreement from the law, with the lawsuit. Now, there's been other um, articles I've seen that she's gotten multiple other things outside of this $3 million, gift cards, um, tea sets from Saudi Arabia, yada, yada, yada. I'm not sure the three million dollars should be the deal breaker of it. Ultimately, that's not the point. The point is, is now Vince being ousted for at least for me being ousted from WWE shouldn't even be talked about at this point. WWE's in a pretty good spot, at least talent wise, on uh, screen wise. He's gone. Yeah. Somehow, some way, I think this ultimately gets him out of the of the picture of WWE slash TKO, wherever the fuck you want to call it. But uh, I just think it's a it's a little weird how this is coming out now. Not defending Vince. Vince is a piece of shit. We all know this. Go read the article. Go see the text. You can see how bad it gets. A little weird how it comes out now when Vince is already gone and we're just talking $3 million. Is $3 million the end all to be all after you got all this other shit? Uh, I mean, Zach, uh, what do you think? And have you ever tried any of those things that he was describing? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, I, I've got a pretty, like, I mean, I grew up on the internet, so I got a pretty strong stomach for stuff. And this, uh, this fucking really made me sick reading it. And the, the most insane part to me, and you were talking about on the group text, which I was not able to participate in because I was busy. But, um, Thank God. dude, like, the just the most offensive part is really the spelling. I mean, who spells pussy P U S S E Y? The Man. English major strike again. So, Ham texted me at like 3 30 or something. He's like, Have you seen the new Vince McMahon text? And I was like, Ooh, here we go. <laughs> And that was the first thing that I said to him. I was like, does he really, when he texts, does he use the letter U instead of the word U? And, like, he texts it like a like a 22-year-old on Twitter. No doubt. No, like, he, dude, this, this fucking It's the only thing that makes me think it might be fake. I, I, I don't think so. I, I almost want to he, agree. He's almost 80 years old. You know that he started texting because he was rich, you know, and he had, he had every act. You know, pagers and everything. So he was used to the abbreviation. Probably just got used to that. Um, but, uh, dude, like, the descriptions, I mean, it was all, like, horrible. It, like, it, it's the worst thing really bad. you can imagine. But he, 
like the, his description, it was like my you suddenly taught my five year old nephew like a bunch of terrible, dirty like sex words. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. Yeah. He's like, I want them to shove their cock down your throat as far as they can, but even farther. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like, yeah. What are you, six years yeah. old? It is so, uh, it is so, so childish. And, like, I guess you would call that, like, a humiliation kink. Uh, yeah. You would think that he would lot. want to be humiliated, though. Like, I thought that was a thing, is that guys with power like to be humiliated. That's always the... Uh, that's the way I you think about guys in power, though. If, dude, like, you can tell just as a WWE fan that Vince has a humiliation kink for other people. Yes. Like, yeah. you, you think, like, he's been humiliating people for fun. I mean, I mean that's Dusty, a really Dusty good Rose point. And dot. Like, FCR shaving each other's backs. Like, all the fucking shit. The kiss that, my ass club. Yeah, all that stuff. Man. Like, he's, he's probably been blasting ropes to his own show for years. <laughs> <laughs> he is the genetic jackhammer. <laughs> and he's like, I mean, he, the dude never grew up. He's 76 doing this stuff. He's a 76-year-old man like doing this stuff. Like, uh, that, that makes it even worse. I don't know, man. Uh, it's, it's like, it's so ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, you, you feel so bad. Because you know that she's No, I don't feel bad for that motherfucker. Not at all, man. Fuck that. No, not him. No, oh, no, he I'm, feels I, bad for the girl. Man, yeah. oh, man. I don't yeah. feel that I'm bad for like, her either. You don't feel no. bad for her? Dude, I'm sorry. No, I'm dude, I am sorry. She is over here willingly going back. Blow the fucking whistle. I am sorry. There is a certain point where you have come up, and this is the fork in the road where if you decide you're going to go down this road and keep fucking with this, this is what you end up getting. If you say, hey, you know what, Vince, we cool, but I'm going to have to get another job or do whatever I need to do and not go down yeah. this road, oh, oh, hold on, then hold you got to go down hold that road, on, too. Hold on, hold on. We shouldn't victim blame here, though. We should. We really shouldn't. Yeah, Shit, that's, like, a, that's a terrible take, Jason. I love you, but that's like the worst thing you've ever done in your entire life. <laughs> <laughs> like we gotta, like we gotta give her some breath. But um, so he's got to be gone for good, right? Oh, I mean, TKO. They put the word horrific in their very general statement. Uh, like you don't norm- normally those are just full of bland statements. Like we're looking into this matter and discussing internally. Like they said, like horrific claims, like. They're basically, I'm sure, just figuring out how to get rid of this dude uh, as fast as possible. They're drafting up the paperwork. I would be surprised if he was still in the company by the time SmackDown airs tomorrow. How damn? <laughs> how long did Triple H know about this? Oh, you know he knows. You know he knows. Of course he does. What he said so, about it is something totally different. I will not be watching the Royal Rumble this Saturday because of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's gone. He's gone. I'm not saying is Vince on the show? No. I then mean, I'm watching the World Rumble. I, mean, I only want to see Vince wise. the only Vince I want to see on that show is if he blows out his quads again. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would be surprised if Vince would be be on the show number one and number two Somebody put this on Twitter, and then this is what you know made this kind of funny when he was initially ousted, and Stephanie came out, and everybody oh, was like, God. you know, thank you, Vince, yeah. and then she started to rile up the crowd. That's something that I, would, you know, I always kind of look back and be like, eh. yeah, right, no, that was fucking weird. That was fucking, weird. and then she was gone, and then Stephanie left. Yeah, but right? it makes a lot of sense that she's not around. Uh, one thing we didn't mention is uh, somebody else who was mentioned in the Wall Street Journal article, which is. Brock Lesnar and mm. did not min- they did not mention that he uh, actually did anything, but just that he that this woman uh, was unfortunately offered to him. Um, and based on the text messages uh, that Vince said, it sounded like um, he might have uh, turned that down. I don't know. I didn't read the seventy-seven page court document, but I will because uh, once I uh, have no food in my stomach, um, so maybe just in the morning. Uh, just ruined my day right off the bat. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the uh, yeah, like so, I imagine I was fully expecting Brock to be there uh, Saturday, and I fully expect him to uh, not be. Not there. be. Yeah, yeah, he won't be at the Royal Rumble. From what I understand, that was a part of trying to resign Brock Lesnar using th- this woman as a part of the deal. 
And from that point, allegedly, uh, I believe he he being Brock Lesnar watched this woman urinate or some crazy shit, called her a bitch while doing so. I don't know. That that's where you have to really do a, the deep dive on this seventy seven page report. Apparently, that's out there. So if you want to deep one for dive, every year he's been be, alive. Uh, Jesus Christ. Um, it's I don't know. Vince, Vince, I'm, I'll be surprised if Vince goes. I just have to see it. Yeah. As fast as it, fast as Friday tomorrow, that's a, that even blows my mind. Is it going to happen? Ultimately, I think it does. I just don't think it happens anytime soon. I just I feel some way. You know how Vince is. Somehow, some way, he gets out of this every right. fucking time. Enough of that, rapists. Let's get on to the two count. One. Two beer. What's the two count? Uh, so speaking of shit, there was a uh, AEW rampage. Um, <laughs> I'm like, wait, wait, what did, <laughs> what did AEW have shit? <laughs> did I miss no, that? <laughs> no. Um, actually, really wasn't that bad. Rampage was was pretty decent. Um, there, uh, I won't go through everything, but uh, Darby Allen versus Jeff Hardy uh, was not as bad as I thought it might be. Uh, that on a variety of ways. Uh, that was the main event. I fully expected Jeff Hardy to get uh, very, very hurt. Uh, but Darby pretty much threw himself all over the place and did most of the crazy stuff. Jeff, the whole story of the match is like Jeff trying to keep up with Darby. He did do a swanton off like the post onto a table or through a table on the floor. Uh, that looked like it sucked. Mm-hmm. But yeah, for the most part, this was like all Darby ping-ponging around, and he they did all kinds of crazy shit, and Darby ended up rolling him up uh, for a pin. So, um, they kind of protected Hardy a little bit here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, did you guys see this match? A for effort from Jeff Hardy. I mean, at least he's out there trying. I just don't know where to Yeah, this is the best he's been in a minute. I don't know where you go with the Hardys at this point, ultimately on screen. Um, this match, it was better than what I thought it was. It wasn't by any stretch a, a great match, but, uh, the roll-up part was just kind of weird after you do all this crazy shit. The roll-up finish, yeah, like you said, it, I guess it protects Jeff, but what are you protecting Jeff from? I mean, it's not like he's going to go after a singles title, tag titles. Feel title like, run. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what you protect guys for. There's no, there's no reason to protect gonna go. He's going to join Jeff Jarrett's stable. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Well, he did a he did a job on Wednesday. So the only reason I say protected him is like he's not laying flat on his back. Um, you know, two shows in a, in a week. Oh, okay. um, that match wasn't that bad, actually. With Swerve, kind of liked it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was another one where I, you know, I I had seen him and Matt in a tag team match, and I was like, I remember last week. I think I was like railing on them both pretty hard, <laughs> like uh, a little stone, but I seem to remember that, and um, <laughs> like. The um, yeah, so but this, yeah, this week was pretty decent showing. Uh, also, pretty decent showing Chris Fatlander and Queen Aminata. Uh, good matchup, both uh, both like tall, strong women. I thought this was kind of, was a fun matchup. Um, Queen Aminata is someone who has been pretty impressive in her losses, and they should probably start giving her wins because she's coming off pretty good in those losses, but uh, you don't have a ton of women stars, um, and you know, she's basically. Uh, just to jump forward to Dynamite. Uh, she lost. Oh no! Wait, sorry. That was uh, ah man. That's terrible. I just mixed up Queen Amanada and Red Velvet. Um, so I caught myself. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, um, and uh, oh, sorry. We also had uh, Jericho versus uh, Seidel, right? Um, yep. Yeah. St. Louis' yep. zone, uh, Matt Seidel. Yeah. So that was that was pretty good. But anyway, go ahead. Um, Queen Amadana. Queen Amadala. Aminata. Aminata. She wrestled on Collision also. I think that's probably what you were thinking of. Mm-hmm. That is probably what I was thinking of. Um, but, uh, she also, also, you mix up Black too, right? <laughs> But did she, did she wrestle Thunder Rosa? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. okay. So I didn't that was on Collision. Up. But that did actually happen. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, yeah, uh, you can talk the most about AW Collision, which uh, was broadcast live from St. Louis, Missouri, Chaffetz Arena. Uh, that is my alma mater. That is the same arena where I graduated college in 2009. 
and that was the only time I've ever been in there it was for my college graduation. So. <laughs> um, it's a good room, man. It is cool. I've seen basketball games there. I saw fish there the night that the Blues won the Stanley Cup. Cup. That was a fucking wild night, man. When they came out, in that the was second, a crazy night in St. Louis. Yeah, second set. The Blues won during intermission at Fish, and then Fish opened up with Gloria and Love and Cup by the Rolling Stones, and that place was fucking electric. Could have been the mushrooms, but that place felt electric. <laughs> Um, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it was fucking wild, man. It was like that. It was quite literally the happiest place on earth. But um, so did they? Did they shoot? Did you? When did you go? Did they shoot stuff before the show? Uh, before collusion? Like, what was that like? What was it? I don't know uh, because I went with uh, Vice. Uh, we miss you, Vice. See you next week. Uh, we because of schedules we couldn't really leave until like six fifteen. So we got there right when collision started. They they were taping okay. they were taping ROH after, but we did not stick around. Could not stick around. But um yeah, uh it was a pretty good crowd, better crowd than I was kind of expecting after all the horror stories that you see. But um opened up with Moxley versus Shane Taylor. Uh, maybe it was because I just walked in. It had been a while since I've been to a wrestling show like that. Uh, but that match was really cool. Ground-based. Uh, they beat the shit out of each other. I thought Shane Taylor looked really good. They were both pretty over with I mean, Moxley was massively over with the yeah. crowd. But uh, there seemed to be a lot of healthy respect for Shane Taylor in the room, too. It was a good crowd. What you guys – What I didn't watch – I didn't get a chance to watch it back on television. So what you guys think of this match? Um, I guess this just gives – to me – credit to St. Louis just for the fact that I was oh, kind of wondering if this would be a scenario where people who knew, knew who Shane Taylor was, like you said, everybody knows who John Moxley is, no big deal. Shane Taylor is one of those names, if you watch ROH, you know who he is. If you don't, then, you know, you got to be introduced to him. So in this scenario, I thought they did a pretty decent job to at least kind of introduce Shane Taylor before he came out and did the job. Um I thought the match was good. I, I, I'm a Shane Taylor guy, so, I mean, the fact that he lost to Keith Lee still kind of bugs me a little bit, but that's neither here nor there. Um, ultimately, it's just, you know, for me, what are we what are we doing with Shane Taylor? What are we doing with Keith Mor- uh, Lee Moriarty? Two guys that you could do something with, but it just feels like we're using them as enhancement, whether it's for Moxley or Adam Copeland in uh, Moriarty's case. Uh, Zach, what you think of this match? Did it seem like a good crowd on television? Yeah, it did. Uh, it came off really well. There was a lot of talk because the ticket sales were not very high, uh, you know, for a wrestling city like St. Louis, but the crowd came off really well. And, um, yeah, uh, this match was good. Moxley gave Shane Taylor so much. Uh, very, very generous he did. Uh, in this match. And uh, although he did fucking nail him with a forearm uh, <laughs> at one point. But, uh, I mean, he gave him 90% of the match, and, um, yeah, it was, it was good. He even sold for, uh, oh, what's his name out there? Lee Moriarty on the outside. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. Um, up next, I you're, you'll have to help me if I'm missing stuff because I didn't write it down. Um, but up next, I believe, was Edge versus Dante Martin. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. It so, was. So live, it looked to me like Edge was playing heel. He looked, uh, he was playing to the crowd. I don't know if it was during picture in picture or during the commercial or whatever, but he was playing to the crowd directly behind the announcer's table, like really heelish. Um, did that come across on television at all, or was I just high? No, I thought it came across a, a little bit. Nothing where it was like, you know, is Edge turning heel, but it was, it was weird just because on this baby face run he's had edges, you know, has been so over and everybody hates Christian, yada, yada, yada. Maybe it's the fact that Dante Martin is an over, um, young superstar and edge felt like, you know, this might have been a time to, you know, really get people invested into the match. I didn't think much of it because ultimately I knew where the, the story was going to end, but, I can't. I would be lying if I didn't say to myself, you know, this is a little peculiar. Three beer. What you think? Did you un- did you see this? Yeah, I thought it kind of came up to me that he was just kind of like the the cocky veteran, like just because yeah, Dante is such a such a baby face, like a baby face move set. So he just kind of pivoted a little bit. Um, and yeah, this was a fun match. My favorite part of it though was it did get this is awesome chance, 
And uh, Nigel McGinnis says, you hear that? This crowd's chanting, Christians, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like a great commentary. It 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 struck me as odd. Um, you can tell, though, like, I know there's a lot of people that are down playing this Cope Open thing where he's just wrestling young guys. And, listen, it's not my favorite. I think that... Uh, there's very few guys that are at this stage in their career that could pull this over and really, um, I mean, especially with the guys he's wrestling. Like, if he was wrestling Miro or something, I mean, he's really going down the card with guys like Griff and guys like Lee Moriarty. Um, Dante Martin's a little bit higher. You know, he's held titles, and he's definitely more over, and people like him more. Um, but you can tell that Edge came to AEW because he wants to wrestle matches. I mean, that yeah. is all he's doing right now. So this is clearly why I came to AEW. AEW clearly promised this to him, and this is what he wants to do. So enjoy it. I mean, the matches have all been enjoyable. No, I haven't had a problem with this. It's uh, it's on the lines of uh, John Cena minus the uh, the U.S. Uh, title, whatever the case may be. John Cena didn't wrestle all named superstars. He, you know, Anybody that came out came out, and you know, with Cena out there, it was probably one, like I said, it was one of the few times I enjoyed John Cena on screen. Edge, or sorry, Adam Copeland is just doing this basically the same thing, just minus the title. What do you think, Zach? Yeah, it'll be fun. I think, uh, I think it'll especially pay off if somebody does beat him, you know, eventually he'll put somebody over, and that'll be do cool. You th- do you think somebody's going? I don't think anybody's going to beat him until he finally usurps Christian Cage. I think until I think maybe he won't lose until he's done with the Christian thing, but I don't know that he'll beat Christian um, or not. Here's um, here's what yeah, this, I don't know how that'll go. Here's what this run does is that you know to quote uh, who was it Mike Singletary? They are who who we thought they are. No, that's Dennis Green. No, yeah, Dennis Green. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we got him off the hook. Edge is what I thought he is, which is, you know, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. That Edge- was some shade. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think of him. He's, you know, he's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, this was um, vindicated. Uh, Queen Amanada fought Thunder Rosa, and um, I could have swore that uh, this was just the Miz with some ass implants and some face paint because she was fucking wrestling so slow. It's like she was in fucking underwater. Thunder uh, Rosa? Yeah, Thunder Rosa. Yeah. Uh, that was that, was that series I, of tweets I sent to you guys. It's like she was walking through it. Dude, you sent that in the group text, and I was like, oh, man. I was like, maybe she's just very deliberate and it came off, like, poorly in person. And then I watched on the TV, and I was like, yeah. I was like, this is The Miz. Oh, <laughs> oh man, catching shrapnel. Why? Man, I said, like, a couple good Jesus. jokes, and nobody reacted. I was like, she wrestles like old people fuck. I said she wrestles like a 4 a.m. piss. That's what else did I <laughs> Horrible. I was. Uh, I was. I did not see them until much later, so I was not. That's uh, fair. That's fair. I don't know what I was doing. That's yeah, fair. I, I was you're at work. Like, sorry, not you're sorry. Like Yadier Molina runs. <laughs> yeah, I was like, dude. <laughs> I'm like, it can't be this goddamn bad. I'm like, what the fuck? She wrestles like Yadier Molina runs. I'm just. I'm tickled with myself. I'll just say this. In Thunder Rose's defense. This is the first singles match when that was since 2022. You know why that piss one is a bad joke? Because 4 a.m. piss is I'm more. It's more like a fire hose, dude. Yeah, you're, you're gonna be there for a little bit. I'm blasted against the wall. I'm like, Whoa! <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, oh yeah, I did forget. Uh, I was just looking back in our group text. I forgot on Rampage. Uh, Ruby Soho choked uh, <laughs> Haley. What's her name in the back? And, uh, Harley I think Cameron. that that up. Are the camera that uh, that unlocked something uh, in me? <laughs> as soon as she did, I was like, "Yeah, we're going to talk about this on Thursday for sure." <clears throat> yeah, we we can put a pin in it until both back. <laughs> no, <laughs> I am no pervert. <laughs> uh, but three guys who are are uh, Billy Gunn and uh, <laughs> the claim. <laughs> so. 
That's their whole fucking gimmick. Um, yeah, it's been Billy Gunn's gimmick for like 40 years. But um, <laughs> I got fucking two words for you. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, so when it says I, his name is Daddy Ass on the Chirons when they're like advertising for the match, I was, I'm was, i like, man, can you believe it? Can you imagine if you were just flipping through and you haven't watched wrestling in like 15 years? <laughs> Or if you've never seen wrestling, you're like, oh, you know, my kid in college likes it. I'm going to turn it on. You turn it on. There's a guy about named this Daddy w. Ass. <laughs> Seriously, so, like, I was I was pretty stoned for this, and I wanted to ask you how it came off of the building because, like, I'm, like, I'm super high, and I'm watching, and, uh, yeah, like, Tony Schiavone is on there. So, yeah, if you're somebody who hasn't watched wrestling forever, you're like, Tony Schiavone is, like, calling this. Um, and there's this segment where it's uh, – the Bang Bang Scissor Gang super group is trying to get together, and it's Daddy Ass and the Acclaimed and the uh, the Bang Bang Gang of the the Ass Boys and Switchblade J White, and um, so like they're doing this, and Tony, this is something you wouldn't notice because you were in the in the building, but Tony Schiavone is like, this is a big moment, guys, and I'm like, dude, you like called the inception of the NWO. Like, <laughs> this is not a big moment. Uh, that was the... Holy shit. That was the the most that place was alive the entire night. I was shocked by it. Absolutely. Proves to me, exactly proves to me what I said. Like, the acclaimed, uh, they're, they're fun, but they are 100% a house show act because that shit came across way better in house probably than it did on TV. Oh my god, that place was going nuts. I could not believe that people wanted this. I was like, they're not really doing this. And then when they all came out on Dynamite, I was like, what the fuck is this? What kind of I faction think it's gonna be is that? great. The only reason I think it's great is not because of the Bang Bang Scissor Gang, which is which is funny. I think it's great because they're gonna turn on them in like two to three weeks and it's gonna yeah, be it's not phenomenal. gonna last very long. Um I think it could be great too. I will say if a year ago you were like, Jay White's going to be in AEW, it's going to be like, fuck yes, what's he going to be doing? <laughs> uh, he's in the super faction with Daddy Ass. <laughs> uh, who apparently is chasing singles gold. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, I'm like, dude, what the fuck is going on? Man. Okay, I agree with what you guys said. Probably the biggest pop all night long. But then when, like, uh, I think it was Max Cash. It Cassidy definitely was. was. Max Caster was like, you know, you guys could be doing this. Jay White could be going for the AEW title. Daddy Ass is, you know, going for singles gold. I'm like, this, it, I get it. It just, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't sound right. Jay White making the save as a baby face. I'm like, what in the fuck in this? No, 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 no. It puts like they put no work into this angle at all. They haven't even addressed in the angle that one guy from the acclaimed is the dad of two guys in the Bang Bang Gang. They don't even talk about it. They kind of talk about it, but I mean, they mentioned it on commentary Saturday, and I think that's why I was making fun of Shivani because he was like, "We're about the reunion of, of the yeah. sons and the dad." No, the, the NWO I, reference I, is yeah. perfect. I, I was, <laughs> I'm like, dude, I don't. He's like, "Oh, this is a big moment." I'm like, "Is it?" I'm like, I'm, I'm like I don't understand. I why could not this believe so people deal. wanted to see it. I didn't want to see it. I was like, I want Jay White to kick their ass, right? Like you said. And then when they all joined up, I was like, "Man, this is how Jay White is I starting." Could to this I is that crazy. Talk. When they turned around like they were getting ready to punch, and then they did the scissors instead. That place erupted. No doubt. I was like, "Wow, okay." What else? <laughs> yeah, I thought I had my finger on the pulse. I couldn't believe it. I'm not saying that I don't believe. I think people both like both sides. So the fact that you know that they're together is great for some wrestling fans. For me, as a Jay White fan, this is the worst case scenario of all time because now he feels like he's been relegated to this super faction that ultimately is not going anywhere, is not getting – Jay White closer to the AEW championship. So for me, big pass on this. What's next? Uh, you, you got uh, a night of really great wrestling. Uh, like as far as match quality, um, outside of the women's matches, is really good. Uh, Buddy Matthews and Daniel Garcia. Holy mm. shit! Yeah, this was uh, this was the match of the night for me. Um, I basically like couldn't take my eyes off of Buddy Matthews. He. Uh, 
sold that he injured his knee and man he sold the shit out of it like i he had me worked i was like they are going to call this match i was like no nah, something fucked up and bo was like don't you think he's just selling and i was like no nah, i think something really fucked up i think they're gonna call this match like they did the other week uh with carmelo hayes and uh austin, austin theory. theory but then Buddy Matthews starts pulling out all this shit, and I'm like, holy shit, he Got just... Your ass. <laughs> I mean, I felt like I was at an old school... I felt like I was at the fucking Sportatorium or something. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just here for the show, and he... I got worked. He Got worked you. me. Uh, it was very cool. I had a great time getting worked, and I was really into the... It got me really into the story of the match, because I was like, when are they going to call this? And I was like, oh, no, he's fighting through it. And I was like, oh, no, he was fucking with me. He's at full strength now. He worked me. I loved it. One of my favorite matches I've ever seen in person. I fucking loved this. It was really good. Yeah, um, I guess my takeaway from it is, you know, I feel not bad for Buddy Matthews, but just he just feels like he's being underutilized. And this was a perfect example of what he can do if given the opportunity and the platform to do so. If he gets that chance, great. I just, I don't know. It feels like, you know, Brody King has kind of stepped ahead of him. Uh, Aleister Black, obviously. Uh, I'm sorry, Malachi Black, obviously. Uh, what an embarrassment of riches. Yeah. They, I mean, you know, can we do something with this shit? I mean, they've already been the trio's champs. I mean, we, we can't go back to that, I don't think. You know, at, at some point, you know, are we going to have one of them break off and, you know, go after a single style? I mean, you got it, then let's use it. I mean, Buddy Matthews is dope. He should at least be ch chasing Orange Cassidy at the bare minimum yeah. or Christian or something. I'll Instead, say this. He's, you know, he's having these, this great match, and then, then what? I'll, so, I'll say this about Buddy Matthews. He has the best male body in the history of the world. <laughs> I won't uh, like never said that. In, the, very, in the history uh, of the world. In the history of the war. Jesus <laughs> you can't get better. That is a 10 out of 10. I mean, he did body Alexa Bliss and Rhea Ripley. <laughs> That's range. The, 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 uh, that I'm not going to sit up and say the man ain't got game. I mean, damn, you gave me a, a, you know, a little accent. I might have a little game, too, motherfucker. I mean, what the fuck? I'll tell you, man. <laughs> I bet he's hung like a rope swing. <laughs> <laughs> Renee Dupree answered the chat. <laughs> Forgot about Renee Dupree. Just hanging Holy dong. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Zach Saber Jr. with the. Uh... It's not the mighty dope, Neil. It's too much dick, kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, never going away. Oh, my God. When people ask me what my TFDK shirt means from now on. <laughs> too much dick, kid. <laughs> That's it. Oh. <laughs> this this con is not getting any better than this. Hit the music. We are done. <laughs> Good shit. Uh, there was another great match. Roderick Strong versus uh, hometown hero Matt Seidel. Mm. And uh, both of these guys have been wrestling for a very long time. And, like, usually as you get older, you slow down. And these guys did not. Uh, they fucking went out there and just had... Uh, a very aggressive match. Uh, I really like this match. Probably, I, I think still the Garcia and Matthews match was a uh, match of the night here, but uh, this was a, a strong contender. Matt Seidel, uh, St. Louis loved their own, and they, uh, I, I'm assuming, came off like that on TV, but like they were hot for Matt Seidel, and uh, Roderick Strong made him look good, but Matt Seidel made Roderick Strong look fucking great. He that, sold the shit out of that backbreaker. I was that, like, that God, fin that, finish <laughs> that, that finisher looked legit dangerous. It's like, God damn, he really threw him up there. Oh, he got some height. Seidel sold the shit out of the backbreaker. I was like, oh, okay. I need a cigarette. What the fuck? No, that was a really good match. I, I agree that the uh, the Buddy Matthews Garcia match was that better just because, for me, it's too up and coming guys, you know, having a, a banger ass match. You know, these two guys are going to have one. You yeah. didn't know if Buddy Matthews and Garcia would translate to what it Those is. Those two guys have been around the block together, too. So, yeah. 
Yeah, and then uh, main event, Eddie Kingston and Ortiz uh, versus Blackpool Combat Club, which in this instance was Danielson and Claudio. Uh, started off with a pose-off. Uh, this guy is like, uh, it was just Eddie and uh, Danielson uh, doing poses for the crowd. Um, who, was, uh, who was the crowd more into in the building? Eddie. Um, Eddie, yeah. But not by a mile. It was a different pop. It was a different pop than, you know, it was pretty equal, actually. I thought it was um, even. But that crowd was hot for both. Eddie was way over as a baby face, big time. I mean, more so right. than Moxley, even. Really? Yeah, that's what it felt like. Huh. That's cool. Uh, and then, I mean, Ortiz is out there, you know, like from the beginning, he's out oh, there to, uh, to take the pin. <laughs> but at the same time, there's, as soon as I there's saw worse. that shit, I was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. There's worse things to be doing than the right. job in the main event of a, of a television show. So, yeah. yeah, I'm sure he wasn't mad about it. Fuck it, I ain't been on TV in how long? Shit, I'll eat this pin. Fuck it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think that's a good fit for him. Like, I'm not saying he has to be a tag team guy, but there's so many, there's so many, um, like, wrestlers in the roster that it's hard to get time anyway. And so if you put him with Kingston, who gets TV time, um, whose gimmick is that he just hates promos, which is so funny for a guy who is so good at them. But every time he cuts a promo, it's like, when can we be done with this? You just interrupted my meditation. I'm trying to go out here for a match. I'm about to either get beat up or I'm going to beat somebody up. And you got out John over here like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I want to see Eddie cut a promo in the ring. It seems like it's been a while since he's done so. Uh, this yeah. this match was exactly what you thought it would be. It was really fun. It was way more um, goofy, you know, starting with the pose off. Like, they went out there to have a little bit of fun, and they did. Eddie is, like, really old-school wrestling. Like, I mean, at least he was there. He was He plays... You know, more than a lot of guys, what it seemed like, you know, we were in the terrace, so we were kind of looking down, and uh, he plays to the back of the house. Like, he plays real big, which is kind of weird because it seems like he's the type of dude that, um, you know, he didn't spend as many years in front of huge crowds like that like some of the other guys do. But very old school in that way, that's the way that I saw it. To me, the two the two takeaways from this match – the, obviously, the number one takeaway, for at least for me, was Danielson not having the eye patch. Um, good, bad, or indifferent, not having it at least signal something, at least to me, that the eye is at least getting better to where now he doesn't have to walk around in the ring with that. The second part, just fast forward into the end, where uh, Danielson spat on Eddie Kingston. To me, that is the like, you know, you. Smacking your mama, stealing from your grandma, you know, there's certain things you just don't do. Spitting on another man, <laughs> that, that's the ultimate form of disrespect as far as I'm concerned. So, to me, Kingston and Danielson are going to have to run it back for this uh, Continental Crown title, whatever you want to call it. Um, it felt like Danielson was kind of, you know, being a little heelish as the match went on. Once he spat on him, I was like, okay, that's full heel on type shit. So, to me, that was the takeaway. The biggest takeaway from that match is now we're going to probably get Eddie uh, Danielson part two with more stakes on it with the uh, the title on the line. So that's something to look forward to. I don't see Eddie losing, but it's Brian Danielson. Weirder shit has happened. So we'll see what happens. Right on. We uh, had AEW Dynamite on Wednesday open up with Samoa Joe and um, – he got the promo basically that uh, folks got to get on his level and uh, basically he's going to be putting motherfuckers out just like he did Hook last week. Hook comes out. I was like, oh, kinda, God, no. <laughs> I was like, don't yeah. catch that work again. Damn, boy. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he shakes, shakes the Mojo's hand and says, uh, I'll see you again. So just says, I bet you will. Then he uh, starts. Uh, that he kind of disrespects him and uh, has security come in. Get this unworthy man out of my ring. I was like, damn. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, Hook throws the security around and just kind of heat Hook back up a little bit. But, um, yeah, uh, be interested. I guess I still feel like we're on the swerve and hangman grind because uh, next we had Adam Page and Pentel Zero Meadow, and Adam Page was out there. And besides uh, a really good match between – 
Page and Penta. Uh, the real story was a was uh, Samoa Joe on commentary mm-hmm. and Page looking at him like the entire match. Uh, so no, just Samoa Joe on commentary w- w- was perfect. I wish he would have been there for like all the matches that. Um, had something to do with him swerve and um, included obviously versus Jeff Hardy. Um, maybe interested to see if, if how he would have looked at Wargo if he would have been on that uh, that match as well. But this match was, you know, it was a good match. Don't get me wrong. Penta is one of the best you have on the roster. He can do basically anything you need him to do, whether it's singles, tag, trios, whatever the case may be. But yeah, the the story of the match was, you know, Paige. And Samoa Joe feeling like they're on a collision course with Swerve coming right behind with the rankings now coming back. Um, that's going to have some sort of play into this. Even Samoa Joe was, you know, put the rankings back over and it, was, and it was basically like, you know, now this is a way to keep the unworthy away from me. So this is all a play into what's going to happen into Samoa to Samoa Joe. But then on the back end, you're going to be looking at the rankings and how things are going to be looking going forward. What did I miss? Just we're talking about Joe and Hook? Yeah, the, the Hook comes out, and I'll, my knee-jerk reaction is like, oh, God, please don't come out here and try to fight Joe again. You don't want that. And then, uh, obviously, they had the uh, the little talk. Hook throws the security around like a bunch of bitches. Yeah, I don't know why Hook had to beat up. The, that was you had, no. It, I, I totally looked, get it. It looked no. kind of dumb. No, I I agree with what uh, Three Bears said. You had to get Hook looking strong again. If he throws around a bunch of random ass dudes, that's the way to do it. I, I think the Hook going out there and shaking his hand and standing toe to toe with him was about as strong as he can look. I'm not disagreeing with that. I just don't think that looked very strong. I mean, listen, I really liked that match last week. Just let it go. Is Hook really going to see Joe again? I don't know. Yeah, it actually came up. Uh, I saw it twice because I Googled uh, Big Samoan fucks Twink, and that was the first <laughs> thing that popped up. Jeez. <laughs> I am no pervert. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. Jeez. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you got some good ones tonight. <laughs> um. Uh, freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy in the back with Renee. Uh, she asked him about Roderick Strong's challenge, and I love his answer. It was very Orange Cassidy. He's like, mm. like, what's your reaction to that? And he's like, my reaction to that is, okay, <laughs> I'll ruffle you. But he said he's not going like, to – the important thing is he said he's not going to stop wrestling, right? So, I mean, he might yeah. not go into the pay-per-view with the belt. That was his point, right? Right. I love that because they said – we were just talking about this last week where – Moxley challenged Naito, but they didn't say it was for the title because we don't know if Naito will have the title. Yeah. Whereas if they build this for the international championship, um, you know, it's disingenuous because it's just basically and, telegraphing every match between here and then. And it wouldn't make sense for Orange Cassidy to not have any title matches between now and then because he defends it twice a week. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. No, I, I love the, this segment just because it, it's classic Orange Cassidy. Um don't I don't give a fuck. I'm just gonna keep doing what I do, and then I'll see you at Re- Revolution. So, in that scenario, I, I want to see how Roddy and the Kingdom kind of play along with this. Are they gonna get involved in the Orange Cassidy matches? Are they coming out at all? Are they just gonna let this thing play itself out? That to me is the uh, the the flip side of the uh, the Orange Cassidy coin, whether whether uh, Cassidy retains or not. I I would assume that he would. But the fact that he's still going to go out and have matches to me was the, is the big thing. Oh, we had uh, Young Bucks backstage and uh, just another uh, Young Bucks being Dick Heels uh, little segment pretty quick, but uh, pretty entertaining. This time they confronted Top Flight for being uh, in the hall without a uh, credential, without their credentials and not in their gear. And uh, yeah, they're just fucking around, but um Nothing real big there. Just more bucks being in dick. A lot of backstage uh, wrestling comedy is bad. This was good. Yeah, uh, Nick Nick Jackson is legitimately hilarious. Like I know you guys didn't watch a lot of the the, the elite stuff, but uh, that guy is so 
under understated and like underrated as far as like his comedy chops go. Matt tends to do more of the talking between the two and the group, but um, dude, Nick Jackson is fucking funny. Um, anyway, uh, then we had a, a match. The undisputed oh yeah, so it was just Wardlow versus Trent Beretta, but undisputed kingdoms out there, and of course, uh, it adds some intrigue to the international title picture because. Trent and Orange are, are close, and Roddy, of course, is in the kingdom. But uh, this did, was not a squash. It was a little bit more. I mean, obviously, he came off Wardlow came off very strong, and he ended up winning. But um, he did have to sell some, so he didn't just run everybody over. But it seems like they're really heating Wardlow up again in the same way. It's not entertaining. It's not riveting. But it seems like they're doing the same thing again. And I imagine he might be a TV contender to Joe somebody that Joe can beat and look even stronger by beating this big, strong boy. Could see that. Um, flip, Trent, heel. Flip, Trent, heel. <laughs> flip, Trent, heel. I'm ready for a Trent Beretta heel run. I agree. Uh, I thought it was going to happen And I week. do like seeing more of him, though. No, uh, Trent can go. It's just, like I said last week, I think we've we've exhausted all we can do with Trent being a baby face, pushing Orange Cassidy post-match. You know, it's another step towards the dark side. So, ultimately, I think we get there now. Oh, I didn't see that. He did that Wednesday night? I'm pretty sure that was Wednesday night. Yeah, I was going to say it was after the match. And uh, Undisputed uh, Kingdom was coming into the ring. And then Best Friends, you know, basically cut him off because they were, it looks like they were getting ready to uh, stomp, trying to do a mud hole. Then Best Friends cut him off. So, Undisputed Kingdom left or whatever. And then... They went back into the uh, the ring or whatever, and Orange Cassidy was coming over to help Trent up, and Trent pushed him off or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, here we go, here we go. So I was, I was waiting for something to actually kind of happen there, but nothing ends up happening. So to me, that's just, you know, it's another baby step to the dark side. When do we get there? Does Trent cost Orange Cassidy the international title? That would be a nice little heel turn if you wanted to do it. So things to look forward to. Uh, then we had uh, a fun segment between Tony Storm and Deanna Perrazzo. Uh, Deanna Perrazzo seemed a little bit more in her skin this, this week. I feel like whenever she debuted and she got that promo, I was kind of uh, giving her some shit because she seemed nervous and she didn't come off. You know, like Mariah May, who was like brand new, you know, came off much, much better than her. But this was fun, and I think my favorite part of the entire thing was uh, that they would they would show them in the same camera shot, but they would have Tony Storm's half black and white. I guess one thing to have like the whole thing black and white, but I just I thought that was a fun, clever little bit of production. Yeah, it was super fun. No, I mean, I laughed. No, I totally laughed when they pulled back the uh, did a wide shot and they showed it. I was like, damn, that's good shit. You know, it, they are going full board, leaning into this timeless Tony Storm gimmick. And I'm all for it. I'm here for the ride. Um, the tattoo portion of the segment was the uh, like the the tipping point to like to see Tony to finally snap, and was like, you know what, fuck this shit. But uh, no, this, I agree with you too, Beer. This was uh, more so Deanna Perazzo feeling, looking more comfortable, whatever you want to call it. I just like I said, I just don't think that she's geared to talk. She's geared to wrestle. So if you want to, you know, put her in these segments, this was probably as good as it's going to get. You don't want to keep going back to this if you don't absolutely have to. Yeah, Deanna Perazzo came off as on her level and as a, you know, a legit, uh, you know, uh, opponent for her, you know, if not for the title, just in story. Like, it seems interesting. And they have a backstory. That, that's always interesting. Yeah, and the, the shit that they're doing with Tony Storm, with all the production stuff that they're doing and the vignettes and everything, they are really playing into the strengths of that character quite a bit. And she is having a, a really fun run as champion. Um, dare I say maybe the best run that we've seen from an AEW women's champion in a long fucking time since Britt Baker, Baker. I'd say. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Good on that. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, you know, pretty clever. Uh, when she started out, uh, she said, uh, I believe you were recently body shamed, which I think is ridiculous because there's so much more to shame about you. And I was like, oh, 
Man, this is the hottest God Jeffrey damn. Ross has ever looked. <laughs> that is a good <laughs> line. So he came out fired. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Mox cut a, a very Mox promo that basically, you know, like, I was saying, Joe at the beginning, he was said, you, you know, folks need to get on my level because I'm going to beat him down. He didn't actually say get on their level. But John Moxley said, uh, what he's, I don't know if he said he had to get in my level, but he's like, you need to keep up. And I was like, man, I was like, that's a fucking John Moxley thing and a half. Like, I feel like if I was like around John Moxley in the, in the level that he performs at in like promos and like in the ring, I'd be like watching that dude and I'd be like, fuck, I need to keep up. Like, I need to do better because he fucking kills it all the time with this shit. Um, yeah, anyway, that's he, it. It was just a kind, promo. He kind of cut the same promo on Collision after mm-hmm. the match. Oh, right on. Yeah. Yeah. So I I didn't know if that was on commercial or not, but I guess it was on. No, it was on. I, I remember the, the, the thing that I remember the most was him saying, and he kind of said it again on Wednesday night. He was like, you know, friend or foe, you know, you got to get, get up to my level. You got to keep up. And I don't know if that was a, a shot across the bow to uh, Blackpool Combat Club or not. It, it almost felt like it just because, you know, that's the way my mind works. But it was, you know, just another – John Moxley intriguing ass promo that made me want to you know fast forward to uh, April see him and uh, Naito in uh, in Chicago so you know Moxley's Moxley yeah um, Jeff Hardy and Thor Strickland like we mentioned uh, was way more entertaining than I thought it would be um, that's about all I have to say about it though you guys got anything else no no uh, crowd being uh, split between Swerve and uh, Jeff Hardy was a little a little surprising, but ultimately they came back around towards the end. So, better match, like you said, better match than I thought. So, next week is going to be weird because they have dealer's choice. So, uh, Swerve is going to pick Adam Page's opponent, and Adam Page is going to pick Swerve's opponent. That's, yeah. that's a weird gimmick uh, for me. Yeah, I really don't. There was no explanation for it either, so it's like, okay. I just, it's the kind of way to extend the storyline. I mean, I get the purpose of it. I just don't get the... I just, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the... Kayfabe shooting. reason. Yeah, it's, I guess, here's the point that I think... Is Who funny. made that decision? Tony Khan? Yeah. I don't know. I just... Not a fan of the dealer's choice gimmick, ultimately... It, it kind of feels Adam like, Pierce uh, is all elite. Yeah, right. It kind of feels like they, you know we're running about out of ideas. So here's an idea to keep the storyline going. You don't need. You, I mean, you don't even have to have these guys on the show if you really don't have to. You got a whole roster of motherfuckers that want to get on the show. Put somebody else on for a week. Yeah, but we criticize them for not really like having like. We criticize them for having too many storylines, so at least they're just sticking with Swerve and Hangman. Like we can't criticize them both ways. I don't criticize. Yeah, the, uh, I don't criticize. Yeah, maybe you don't. Maybe I'm just talking about myself. Yeah, I was about to say I don't think they don't have. Maybe too I should many look in the mirror. Maybe I should take a long <laughs> look in the mirror. <laughs> That's between you and the mirror. I'm just saying in this scenario where you got got. We were just talking about you know fill in the blank can't get on TV because you know the roster's so big. You didn't. You don't have to have a dealer's choice to keep Swerve and Hangman going. No, it's, it's all that ball is already going. The inertia. Although Hangman is, still doesn't seem as mad at him as he should be. I mean, backstage oh, the other Jesus. night they seemed like Zach Morris and AC Slater, like they were best pals, but they don't actually get along. It's like, now wait a minute, Swerve ate or <laughs> fucking <laughs> Nana ate your wife's blueberries, dude. Kicking skillets and shit. You should be. You should still be super mad at him. I, I think that was just a, a reprieve of, you know, civility at that moment. I'm talking about kayfabe style. Kayfabe style. That they should be, Hangman should still be, like, wanting to kill those I, guys. Look, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying for that one moment, Hangman was not worried about Swerve trying to troll him about two wins. The goal is the AEW championship, and Swerve ain't got it. Fuck Swerve. That's the way I took it. Okay. All righty. Um, sorry, what do we have next? We had, oh, yeah, Thunder Rosa versus Red Velvet. It's like the least yeah, said about this, probably the better. And um, Tony Schiavone in the ring to interview Darby Allen and Sting. And it seems like 
uh, Sting and Darby Allen are going to go after the tag team titles. Uh, seem very explicit. So, uh, what do you guys think? They are undefeated. So, I mean, it makes sense in kayfabe, especially because they're talking about the you know bringing the rankings back. Um, I'm pretty whatever on the rankings. Like, I'm. It's not something I'm gonna like really worry about. It's a tool. Like, if they use it well, great. If they don't use it well, I still just want to see the matches. I want to see like even if the rankings aren't the way that they are. So, if they give me better matches, I'm fine. But Somebody that's twenty-seven and zero undefeated seems like they should get a shot. Rankings or no, um, it is interesting though. Do you think they win the titles and then lose them at Revolution or retire with the titles? I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, I have no problem with any of this. I think that kayfabe style them being twenty-eight and zero means that they should get a title shot, and I also think it makes me want to see the outcome of the match. Like they, they're telling a story. I want to see how they finish this part of the story. I want to see if they book them to lose to Ricky Starks and big bill, because that would be a nice little trampoline bounce for Ricky Starks and big bill. If they can actually give sting his only loss in AEW. Am I overthinking that? Or does that seem right? Um, I wasn't thinking of it that way, but, yeah, I mean, just because just because Darby and Sting are undefeated, that would make Ricky and Big Bill look better. My biggest problem with it is, why did we take so long? We could have done this. Are we going to be mad if they give it to Sting? I ain't going to be mad. I just Zach, you going to be mad if they give oh, it to Sting? Oh, hell no. <laughs> Not at all. I, mean, cool. I, might, I might buy a fucking replica belt. I just... I, this could have been done beforehand, and then if you wanted to wrap up with the Bucks, then so be it. I'm not sure if they beat. I don't. Uh, I'm torn because I will. I think they're going to ultimately beat Big Bill and Ricky Starks, but that doesn't do much for Bill and Ricky Starks. You don't want them. You don't want Sting and Darby to lose before the Bucks. But they have the titles. Do they beat the Bucks and then Sting retires? I mean, it it just feels like this was like, oh, let's do this before he retires. And when they they could have done this six months ago, nine months ago, they've been around. Sting and uh, Darby Allen have been a team around a, a long enough to where they could have had a title shot. And for whatever yeah, reason, but if you didn't want to, if you didn't want to beat him, if you didn't want to beat Sting. But you also didn't want to put the title on them. You can't put them in a title match. I imagine that's the only thing that stopped it. Like, they didn't want to put the titles on them. But now you're waiting this late? I mean, damn. You know, March 4th or whatever it is, 3rd is creeping around the corner. It's like five, six weeks away. It just feels a little rushed for a title shot if they win it and then drop it. Now you've hot shot at the titles. It just feels like this is It's more problematic than what it should be and at least short term and then long term like I said hot shine in the tiles doesn't feel like a way to go yeah I don't know um I'd be fine with any outcome I'll, look. you know it's funny like I'll, I, when I'm thinking when I think about it in my head when I'm going over like I'm like oh like I'd be surprised if it starts a big bill beat them but I'm like that's pretty cool they give them a that's a really big win uh but then like if they won if Sting and Darby won, I'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool. Sting's a tag team champ. He's doing his retirement match as a champ. Uh, and then if he lost or won in his retirement match, I feel like I'd be happy either way, too. It's just, uh, I'm like, ah, oh, it's kind of, it's, I, I like the story. I'm not saying I, do, I don't like the story. I just think that at least the tag team championship part of the story it could have been done a little sooner. Not even saying it was, you know, this year or whatever, it just feels like now all of a sudden we got to give him a tag team championship match. I'm just like, dude, you could have done this already. But, I mean, it, I'll say this much. A, we're talking about it, and B, we're going to watch. So, I mean, C, ultimately, the job is being accomplished. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think this is going to be a big pay-per-view, and I think this match has a lot to do with this. No, this, uh, this match uh, is happening on free TV, baby. No, I'm talking about the – just the Bucks and um, oh, oh, the thing, okay. yeah. 
just because I feel like a lot of people are going to want to tune in to Sting's last match. I think it's a big draw. Um, I mean, it's something that I might even consider spending $50 to watch on my big TV instead of, uh, you know, streaming uh, for free on my iPad. <laughs> but, uh, right. um, the, uh, uh, I don't even have airplay over here. Hey man, I'm broke. If you get that uh, uh, triple threat we talking about, then yeah, that that might be punk. That might be worth punking down a nice little chunk of change for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, they had a trios match, uh, Mogul Embassy versus the Acclaimed. Um, I think the most remarkable thing out of this was they did come out as a as a super group, uh, the Bang Bang Scissor Gang, um, and uh, I, I really liked uh, <laughs> Caster's rap this time. It was different, different flow, different delivery, and it was pretty, pretty clever. That's the most remarkable thing for me. I, I like Mogul Embassy. Um, I was just, I wasn't really paying attention to this match. Maybe it was good, but it didn't, it didn't keep my attention, and I was doing other shit. Exact same. <laughs> wow, I actually watched the match. Um... I, 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 love a, I love a co-host that does his homework. Oh, oh well, it, it, it's kind of my job, you know. Um, I was just a little that's, dis- that, that, that Jason's gimmick is he watches everything. <laughs> that <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> I was say, as I'm drinking, he ain't Red on Bull. his phone. No. He ain't on his phone. He ain't reading the book. He ain't doing the dishes. He ain't, he ain't taking a shower. The <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, there, hey, there have been matches I've taken a shower on before, but you know, let's not get, misunderstand that shit. <laughs> No, I, I like Mogul Embassy. I just thought that this was kind of a, a scenario where this was go- geared to make Bullet Club Gold look like baby faces. Jay White comes out, snatches the uh, the chair. They uh, power bomb one of the uh, Gates of Agony through the table, whatever the case may be. Basically, you know, the, the assist to Billy and uh, the acclaim to get the getting the win. I don't know if they turn heel right away. I agree. Ultimately, I think this implodes where Bullet Club Gold goes back to being heels, especially if and when Juice comes back. Right now, I mean, it it sounds good. You know, it, it'll sell some T-shirts. I'm just not sure where the fuck this goes, ultimately. The Gang Bang Gang. Stop. That's, a, that's, a that's Vince, what they uh, should be called. No, that's a Vince T-shirt. You know, sell that shit to... Uh, I am... No pervert. Uh, uh, okay. okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Serena Deeb. <laughs> Where do you think Serena Deeb was here? She was at the soda station. <laughs> <laughs> she was waiting for the buster to bring the ice. <laughs> God damn you. <laughs> shit. Man, that girl needs to put, have some respect put on her name, man. She is... She could go. She's waiting for ring. Deontay to bring the ice. Stop, nigga. You ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed, Tony Cobb. Tony Cobb. Dylan's Tony supposed Cobb to be bringing the ice. ice. <laughs> God damn. Actually, Dylan's a perfect buster name. Yeah, right. That's perfect Applebee's yeah. buster name. I'm sure I ran across a Dylan in my travels. Uh, she has a, a match next week. You know, we'll see what happens then. But, you know, fingers crossed that Tony Cobb does right by her. That's all I got. Yeah, they've been building up. I mean, that's a lot of vignettes because we've been making these jokes for a few weeks. Uh, she's, she's like getting the glacier treatment, like she's getting like vignettes every single week. Uh, Nathan Nathan as well. Jones. <laughs> well, I will say Veer is coming. Has Nathan Jones's name ever been uttered on this podcast? I don't think so. That's amazing. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> He fought The Undertaker in WrestleMania one year. I want to say that's right. Are you serious? He's yeah, part yeah. of the street? Yeah. yeah, he's part of the street. It was a tag team match. Was it? Right? Oh, I've, I've, I've seen this guy. Oh. Yeah, he he kind of looks like Ryback. A tall in my head. when I was watching, but uh, yeah. A I was not watching, but yeah, I've seen that guy. <laughs> yeah, man. They, they showed vignettes of him forever. You know who else they did that really worked was Del Rio. They showed Del Rio vignettes forever, man, and he came in hot. Ooh, I fucking loved early Del Rio. In, He's back in uh, AAA just, like, now. Spit, they're just like spinning newspapers, hitting desks, like in camera <laughs> flashes. Like what? What were they? It was no, it was like cases. it was like him sitting in like like a Cuba, like a Havana type spot, just talking about being rich and stuff. It was he was it was uh. it was really good shit. Um, 
Uh, and then, you, remember, you remember Regal? Whenever he went, he went back to or he went to WWF. Oh after, yeah, real uh, good stuff. The 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 real uh, the real man. Yeah, he wore a yeah, hard hat. Man, <laughs> man's man. <laughs> <laughs> He's a man's man. Oh, beautiful stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're way off track. Um, we're burying the lead here, which was uh, Edge, Russell, Benora, Suzuki in yeah, 2000 yeah, yeah, I, about that. <laughs> I think the combined age for this match is 213. <laughs> but... <laughs> Edge, Russell, Suzuki. Bingo! <laughs> it's definitely over 100, but uh, it was still awesome. I love this match. Is that something I'd ever thought I'd see in my entire life, and I loved it. It is such a weird hypothetical match in your head. What do you think of it, Jason? Weird how it sets up. Uh, Edge, well, Edge, Adam Copeland goes to Tony Khan, asks about Suzuki. Next thing you know, without Adam Copeland's knowledge, Suzuki and Adam Copeland's made for the following week. To, Actually, for yesterday or whatever. Is that really what happened? That's the report that I saw on uh, on Twitter, so take it for what it's worth. Um, this is what I thought it was going to be. You know, the two guys just squaring off in the ring, let the bell ring, and just, you know, let them just beat the crap out of each other. So, yeah, this was uh, entertaining, to say the least. So, it was like a gift from Tony Khan to Edge, basically? Essentially, yeah. He wanted to wrestle Suzuki, and TK has, the, you know, that pull, so... He made it happen super quick, and before he, somebody came to Adam Copeland backstage and was like, you know, Moxley, I think it was the one, if I read, if I remember the report correctly, Moxley comes back to Adam Copeland backstage. It's like, so what you think about the Suzuki match? He's like, what? Suzuki match? And he's like, oh, yeah, I think, yeah, you got the match with Suzuki. It's on Dynamite for next week. So in that scenario, it's funny how it sets up. It was just like I thought it was going to be. Um, Suzuki not shaking Copeland's hand post-match is perfect. Um, nice, short, 10, 12-minute match. He's like, Cody Dunn's like, I had to pay six figures for Danielson's entrance music. Like, Suzuki only cost five grand. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I say, drop in the bucket, baby. Um, yeah, I don't want to rain on the base parade. This was exactly what I thought it would be. It was pretty good. You know, Suzuki, his matches are a lot of chops. A lot of chops. Um, we're gonna stand here and fight tonight, God damn it. I, th- I almost think the tra- I I think we I think there's too many chops. No such thing <laughs> in wrestling. Period. No such thing. You're ju- you're just uh, you got that PTSD. That's all. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Danielson Danielson's about to wrestle Yuji Nagata. Uh, oh my god! Like next week, so I think you're gonna see a few chops in that match. Yeah, too. there's gonna be some chops. Um. But I, I thought it was kind of funny the guys chant and fight forever like a minute and a half into the match. It's like, okay, <laughs> let, let, let's Jesus let them – yeah, give them a second, guys. <laughs> it's simmering, guys. <laughs> right. It's not ready to eat. They're still just locked up. It's like, come <laughs> yeah. on, man. They haven't even done their first double down yet. <laughs> right. All right, anything else from AEW? No, we did a lot. Okay, let's get to that three count. One. And, I mean, this is what the week is all about, really. I mean, this is the important stuff. We're getting to it an hour and a half into the podcast. The Royal Rumble is this weekend, and the Royal Rumble is consistently the most fun to watch. Uh, it's probably the one that everybody looks forward to the most, I would say. This and WrestleMania, are the they're really the two big ones for me. I mean, if I have to skip, if it's those two in SummerSlam, and I can only watch two, I'm watching the Royal Rumble and Mania. Um Long way to say I like the Royal Rumble better than SummerSlam. Uh, this one has got to lead off. We have to talk. We have to talk before we get to our predictions. We got to talk about what happened because there was quite the segment on Monday Night Raw. Uh, it was CM Punk and Cody Rhodes face to face in a promo, and I thought that this shit fucking ruled it really makes you think about how AEW dropped the ball with CM Punk when he had when he would have something to say if he would have came back from brawl out and had something to say about the young bucks and they started making money off that instantly god damn what a ball dropped but I thought that CM Punk was awesome in this I thought Cody was better and uh what a segment what you think of it Jason um our irony on both sides. Um, Punk saying I'm better than I'm the better. I'm more American dream, I'm more American dream, dream than you. Are. C- 
Cody reversing it. I'm more CM Punk than you are. Um, I don't think anybody won or lost this. To me, both guys had interesting points. Um, I'll take it one step further with AEW, quote-unquote, fumbling with um, with CM Punk. I think they did the same with Cody Rhodes, just kind of shoehorning him. Unless he just really did not want to be the AEW champion, I think it was it has just been hard not to see him at the top of the card in some form or fashion. Tony Khan could, you know, if he really didn't want to do it, Tony could have talked him out of this. See him as a TNT champion is always going to be weird to me and to never face the champion except for one time. And then the one time he, well, one time he had it, he lost and can never go back to have the title again. Always seemed weird to me. Neither here nor there. I thought this was the next week segment. It definitely sets up what's going to happen on Saturday night. But for me, I don't think there was a winner per se. It just it was really ironic to see both guys talk about past, present, future in a WWE ring in twenty twenty three. Zach, what did you think about the segment? That was an awesome segment. Um, I didn't know you know Cody's got that neck tattoo, but I didn't know he had uh, Uno reverse cards on his suit lapel. He just pulled <laughs> that shit out. <laughs> and uh, whenever like whenever Punk did the whole like got more American Dream, I was like, man, I was like. I've been shitting on Punk ways for like a lot recently. And I was like, that was a pretty good promo. Mm. And then Cody pulls out the uh, "I'm more CM Punk than you," and I was like, damn. Ooh. I was like, I was like, these these guys are both just glad that Drew McIntyre is not out there in the segment to make them both uh, look not as good because Drew's been outshining uh, everybody on the mic in WWE, I think, uh, recently. But uh, anyway, uh, this is a great segment. Uh, Drew has been awesome. Um... Okay, we'll get to Rollins in a second, but because uh, you gave me a segue there, Drew McIntyre fights Damian Priest in the main event. Uh, McIntyre ends up going over. Uh, what you think about the match, Zach, or Zach? Yeah, Truth gets involved. Yeah, I mean, solid, uh, solid uh, Raw main event and uh, kind of a expected outcome. They are, you know, I really think. We can all save it for, you know, predictions. But, um, you know, Drew is, uh, you know, Cody's the top star of, of Raw. And, you know, Punk is obviously up there. But, you know, it's like they have a lot of, like, real deal star power. And uh, Drew is absolutely in that mix with, with Rollins and Cody and Punk. And uh, he's, the, he's like the fourth pillar of that show, really. They've been I telling a compelling whole- story with him. They've been, you know, he is legitimately wronged. <laughs> he kind of like, like we talked about, he kind of turned babyface on Punk and got the crowd behind him, even though he was nominally a heel out there. He's an interesting character right now. I, I don't want to call him a tweener. I wouldn't say he's a tweener, but um, yeah, I think people are into him because he's doing a really great job. I think you can, at least for me, I can relate, well, not relate, but uh, I guess empathize with the the story of Drew McIntyre. I thought he he's not get never gotten the credit for being a a champion through the pandemic, and I think that we'll always look back on that, especially as we get further and further away from it. Uh, looking at it on wrestling, there there's champions in the pandemic that don't get their due. She, I think, is one. Drew McIntyre, I think, is another. If everything was equal and you had WrestleMania in front of fans and you had Drew McIntyre go over Brock Lesnar, I think the butterfly effect is totally different. So you take that. Now you take the fact that Drew's gotten, you know, he feels like he's been wronged in modern times. You got to piss off Drew McIntyre. So at that point, I can at least understand why he's pissed off. If I, I wish that I was a writer for WWE because I got a great line. Like if CM Punk's in the ring with Drew McIntyre, he'd be like, yeah, Drew, you're the champion during the pandemic and nobody was there to not care about you. I'd be like, oh, man, oh, that'd be fucking badass, right? I was thinking about that today while I was driving. You ain't shit. The promos I cut on Drew McIntyre. <laughs> what, Drew, Drew, what Drew did to you, man? Damn. Dude. Nothing. I love him. I just think, I, yeah, you, you know. Yeah, you love him, all right. <laughs> that's, I mean, Sorry that's, for that shrapnel you got in your arm, That's Drew. how. That's how good the story is. It's got me thinking about it while I'm fucking driving. Um, so, uh, so, okay. So, the. There was some big news that Seth Rollins uh, tore his meniscus, I think, or his L- yes. MCL That's during the gender ball match. The gender curse strikes again. Mm. Um, 
Seth Rollins uh, comes out, cuts a promo like he's not going to make it to WrestleMania. Gunther's music starts playing. This pops me. Oh, yeah. Uh, this uh, It's like, oh, here we go. They have been doing a spectacular job leading up to this Rumble because it is going to be a compelling Rumble with how they book it and who goes over and Final Fours and things like this. Jason, what do you think about Seth Rollins and Gunther? When Seth comes out with the knee brace, my knee jerk reaction is, is this the spot where they pull the trigger on Damian Priest? I knew that even though Damian Priest was scheduled against Drew McIntyre, my, my, my mind thinks of other things. And this my knee jerk reaction was, is this the chance that they're going to pull the trigger when Gunther's music hits? I had no idea where we we're going with this. So I, I just took it for the ride that it was. Um, at some point, I, I would assume that these guys are going to cross paths if Seth is healthy now. When that is, will Seth be the champion? I don't know about either or. Um, just the segment itself, I was looking for one thing and got something else, and I was pleasantly surprised with what I got. Gunther feels like he's already on that big-time stage with Seth, Punk, um, Cody, Whoever else, Drew McIntyre, you want to go with those four? I'll throw Gunther in there as a fifth option as well. Him staying across from Seth Rollins made me really realize how big of a star he is and where he's ultimately going to go. And a year from now, he'll be in the world title picture and he won't come out of it. Remember a few years ago, whenever we were so down on WWE because it legitimately sucked, it was some of the worst wrestling I've ever seen in my entire life. I've spent a long time watching wrestling, and I've seen some really bad wrestling. <laughs> that was bad. It was so bad that they had Walter or Gunther, and we thought that they were going to fuck him up. Mm-hmm. And, man, they have not done that, thankfully. Like, he is absolutely where you thought that he would be, you know, or where he should be. And, uh, man, they've done a really great job with him, and I'm glad that they're thrusting him into this main event scene, and he seems like he is absolutely perfectly comfortable with it. Yeah, comfortable with it, made for it. Prediction right now, Gunther wins a Royal Rumble. Rock wins the title in Elimination Chamber. Rock, Gunther, WrestleMania. Book it. This Holy shit. <laughs> this motherfucker here. <laughs> Fight forever. <laughs> I was saying, uh, yeah, I'm not coming into work today. I think that there is a close to 0% chance that Gunther wins the Royal Rumble. Um, I really want to see Gunther whoop ass in the Royal Rumble. Oh, I think we're going to see it. Oh, he's going to whoop some fucking ass. Uh, too bad Brock Lesnar's not going to be there because that was going to be a big fucking moment with uh, Gunther standing next to Brock Lesnar. Um, and you can almost guarantee that they were going to do it. There is nobody that I can think of that I'd rather see Gunther stand face-to-face with than Brock Lesnar, actually. I mean, ultimately, we've gotten to that point where Gunther has been ascended to where now – you, you can't look at him. He's beating like the Bronson Reed, so he's beating the big guys. He's beating the Chad Gables and everybody in between. So now you're, you're looking at, okay, so now it's like Cody's, CM Punk's, Drew McIntyre beat him in a triple threat. So, I mean, you know, we're getting to the point where now we're running out of people for going through the face. Brock Lesnar is ultimately the final boss when it comes to WWE. If you beat Brock, you're fucking over. That was the... And I'm, I'm holding out hope nice. that they've even put in. They still have to go with Brock Lesnar anyway. No, I doubt it. Look, look, look yeah. I doubt it. I doubt it. But I, I mean, think, damn. I think, I think the Wall Street Journal is the final boss for WWE. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I do think that there's a close to zero percent chance. Uh, we also had Nia Jax and Becky Lynch talk uh, shit to each other and Becky Lynch has another run in with Rhea Ripley in the back. Jason? It's it's the bill for Nia Jax at least, in, at least in my mind. Now whether or not they pull the trigger on it on Saturday is yet to be seen but they're at least making the attempt to make Nia feel like she is 
a credible threat past the the size portion of the program. She's beat Becky Queen. She's you know she's chasing Rhea Ripley down. You know she you know injured Rhea, Rhea Ripley and uh, countless others. You know on her return. So in that scenario. You know, it's a bill for Nia Jax. I don't think much more of it than that. Becky, obviously, is going to be in the mix to win the Rumble. Um, we'll see. Uh, Zach, any thoughts? No, I didn't see the segment, but I agree with Jason. Yeah, so uh, SmackDown, I saw a little bit of. I didn't see the part that I want to go back and watch. I completely forgot about it until I'm looking at it right now, which was the KO show with Logan Paul. was a segment that I want to watch. Jason, was that good? Um yeah, just because you got two of the best talkers in the, in, uh, the business. That's high praise. Yeah, it's, I think Logan Paul is just is a classic, ready-made heel. He came off as such here. Um, got KO to take off the cast and then attacked him, po- uh, you know, after the fact. So, I mean, it's it's sad that oh, – I shouldn't say sad, but I was mad to see KO fall into that uh, banana in the tailpipe trick, but – Ultimately, it builds up for, for their uh, their Royal Rumble match. I think this is going to be one of the better matches of the night. Logan Paul just feels like a, a natural heel. People want to boo him. He, he it came off very well in that segment. Zach, did you see this segment? Vince very into bananas and tailpipes, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> big bananas. I am no pervert. Uh, but, uh, no, I, I agree with Jason. I think that Logan Paul's probably the most naturally gifted dude to do this since, like, Kurt Angle. Like, if he wanted to be a full-timer, he could be, like, maybe, like, just, like, we'd be talking about him as not just, like, the fantastic celebrity um, wrestler. Like, he could be just a really great professional wrestler for a living, but he's got so much other shit going on. Yeah, Kurt Angle uh, is the one that people talk about being the uh, the most fish-to-water uh, guy from outside ever um, long career this guy's favorite of all time that's going to do it for our three count One, two, Fernando, no joke. Three. god I was so pissed when he beat the rock Jason sir you came up with some new rules for the predictions these are going to be the first predictions of the year no, I wouldn't say new rules just you know well the slates are wiped clean once again, Jason won 133 to 131 to less than that. <laughs> you want to give out your score, man? 120. <laughs> so we're back to zero. So how many points? So we're going to pick three guys. We're each going to pick three to win the Rumble. I think they're all going to be the same three. How many points for one? How many points for two? How many points for three? The winner uh, will get five points. If you get, if you pick, pick the number one guy, if you pick Santino Morella to be your most likely, and it hits, you five get points. five points. Three points for your number two. Okay. One point for your number one, or number three. Okay. So then uh, the rules are clear. So let's not start with the rumbles. Let's start with uh, the aforementioned Kevin Owens versus Logan Paul for the U.S. title. Jason, who you got? Um, it's going to be hard for me to, to not pick Logan Paul at this point. Um, I think it's like I said, this has the potential to, to kind of steal the show a little bit. Obviously, the Rumbles will be the main focus, but uh, this has all the potential in the world to be one of the uh, the show stealing matches, the highlight matches, whatever you want to call it. KO is going to bring it. Logan Paul has, has been on this spotlight in this shine on the couple of different occasions, and every time you see him, it's a big time stage. This is another big time stage. I got Logan Paul to retain. Zach, who do you got? Same. Too early to take that off, Logan Paul. They're giving a good story out to the KO. He's going in injured. Uh, he's going in, you know, angry as KO does. Uh, so I think uh, this is going to be Logan Paul. Um, I am also taking Logan Paul for all the reasons already stated. Uh, they want him holding that title at WrestleMania. So I think, I don't know who's going to wrestle at WrestleMania. I think they might make it like a three-way or a four-way just to get as many guys in the ring with Logan Paul as possible. L.A. Knight feels like the L.A. Knight is definitely a front runner. Uh, Up next, let's do the Women's Royal Royal Rumble. Uh, (laughs) Zach, give me your least to most. Give me three names. Least to most. Okay, so least. I'm going to go with 
a big old outlier, and I'm going to say Sasha Banks. Oh, man. I still think that she's not going to show up, but that's like, you know, it's open. You know, that would be a huge, huge, huge thing to do. Um, thrust her right into the main event picture. Come back uh, home, then Sasha. I'm gonna... Yeah, yeah. The thing exactly. is, that's one of those things, though. If she enters, we know she's winning, right? No. I wouldn't say no, but I would be. I, I feel like she would enter at number thirty and win. If it was me booking it, if she was coming back, that's what I would have her do. I'd have it be number thirty and she'd win. All right, so you have Sasha Banks in the three slot, Sasha. like a coward. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I'm gonna go with uh, with Becky uh, after that, and uh, my number one is gonna be Bailey. I think Bailey's been putting in work. She's never really won a uh, a rumble, and she's like you know one of those just tried and true WWE. Like she's a she's a main eventer, and this would get her in that area. Uh, yeah, and maybe she eliminates like one of the damage control to win it, and then that causes like you know problems. All right, so uh, right off the bat, me and Zach have some different picks. So I have Bailey in the three slot. I have Bianca Belair in the two slot. And I have Becky Lynch as being the most likely. I have Becky Lynch challenging Rhea Ripley because either way, that's going to be the WrestleMania match. It's just how they get there. Jason. Um, didn't know that Bailey never had it. I'm still not 100% sure that this is the case, but... If I read this right, Bailey's not had a singles match at WrestleMania. That seems a little weird to me. Uh, I'd have to really go back and look at that, but neither here nor there. I'll Probably just blown ACLs every single time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, she, I, she was hurt a lot. You yeah, know? And that's, that's the only reason like, I can think. Yeah, and I was like, you know, when I read this, it's like, does this happen? But neither here nor there. I love the Bailey pick. Is ultimately where I'm going with this. Uh, least the most, I'm gonna go. I've been batting this around in my head, but I'm going to stick with my guns. I'm going to go Becky Lynch as least likely. I think she'll be one of the last four in, but I don't necessarily think that she will win it per se. Two, I got Nia Jax. I, I think they're, you're pushing her to be pushed. I'm just not convinced that she ultimately wins it. To me, the safest bet of the bunch. It's on Bill's list. It's already made kind of a backstory uh match to begin with. I'm going with Bianca Belair as I'm most likely to win the Women's Royal Rumble. That is incredible that the three of us... Wow, so there's a lot of intrigue. There's a lot of potential winners um, out of that because none of us three have the same picks, so we're going to be off to a hot start. Speaking of hot starts... You, uh, you guys think, real quick, sorry, you guys think Jade shows up? Yes, I think that Jade Cargill shows up. Uh, any other surprises like, you're expecting? I, was like, I do want to talk about the surprises, and that's part of it. I think Jade and Trinity or Naomi are definitely showing up. Yeah, I was going to say Naomi, to me, is the slam dunk of the bunch. Uh, she just dropped the uh, Impact Knockouts title to Jordan Grace. Tonight was the rematch. I would assume she loses that, too. Any chance she wins the Rumble? Uh, I don't think there's I don't think there's a chance that she wins it. I think that she comes out and does what Naomi does in a rumble, you know, has a couple of big glow. spots. Uh yeah, hopefully she <laughs> does go and but hopefully she does come back and, you know, throw a couple of women out. When it, however this happens, whoever she throws out will be like her first feud coming back to WWE. Jade is an interesting call. I would love to see it. For me, I mean, if she's not ready, if you're not going to have her wrestle from that point on, don't bring her out. Uh, any NXT uh, gals you can see in this? Roxanne. Yes, uh, I can see that. Yeah, I think it, this is uh, coming. Lyra Valkyra. No, uh, they have a match coming up for the women's title. I would assume Valkyria w would retain. At that point, Roxanne has. What else to do on? But the that's NXT. the next night. Is that that's Sunday night? Shit, is that Sunday night? I don't no, know. That's, no, it's the following week. It's the following week. Okay, oh. um, I could see Roxanne and Lyra Valkyra uh, both in the match and kind of like eliminating each other or something, so they could like put a little shine on that title match. Where Davenport is a wild card. It, 
she kind of feels like she's I bet another she is. that uh, <laughs> ass will or, uh, um, or Tiffany. I think Tiffany Threat would be good. Yeah, would be good. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense. Uh, NXT she could actually eliminate. Again. She could eliminate Becky. That'd be pretty fun. That would be. Um, so we have the fatal four away for the WWE heavyweight title. Uh, Roman Reigns versus LA Knight versus Randy Orton versus AJ Styles. I'm going to do this, but I don't know why we're even going through this, but uh, I'm going to go from <laughs> least to most. So I'll put, I guess, uh, LA Knight as the least, AJ Styles, uh, Randy Orton, and Roman Reigns, I guess. Uh, Roman Reigns, my Stone Cold Lead Pipe Lock of the Week. Uh, Jason, who you got? Exactly the same. Exactly the same. Lead <laughs> pipe lock of the week. It's uh, if there was anybody that would beat uh Roman at this point, it would probably be Randy. Outside of that, we just got guys that are going to uh, make this a really interesting match. Um, there should be. A I spin-off. want to watch it. Yeah, there's there's going to be a spinoff feud coming out of this. It feels like AJ and LA Knight will be that spinoff feud. Maybe Randy Orton and. Uh, uh, Roman wrestle singles in um, Australia for Elimination Chamber. Rock they said Roman's not going. Okay, but well then even better. They yeah, Roman definitely retains. It's definitely the lock of the week. And then you know Roman takes a vacation until uh, WrestleMania time. Uh, Zach, who you got? Who knows? Maybe this one's like the 2020 election where you're just like ah, like there's no way you idiots are gonna pick this game, <laughs> and then they end up doing it. Like, uh, but. The, you fucking uh, won? Yeah, 2016 election, rather. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, but uh, it's been so long. Uh, the You got AJ Styles, LA Knight, Randy Orton, Roman Reigns, right? LA Knight as least. Uh, oh, okay. I'll put Styles least. Yeah, I mean. And then that's my Stone Cold left pipe lock of the week as well. Okay. All right. So, now we got the men's rumble. So. Uh, before we go into our winners, uh, let's talk about some surprises. Do we see, I've called for a, many weeks now, we're going to see Braun Breaker. Do we see Carmelo Hayes? Yes. Uh, Zach, do we see Carmelo Hayes? I hope so. Uh, I hope, uh, just, uh, I think actually, uh, maybe even better, uh, would be Trick Williams. What about, Ooh. what about Dragonoff? No. No, probably not. Just because he's the champ. What about Baron Corbin? I wouldn't have a problem with that at all. You got thirty spots. Yeah, to I wouldn't fill. have a problem with it. Uh, but yeah, there is thirty. Uh, what about Hogan? <laughs> <laughs> he said that shit. I, I was about to say it, it, is, it is down in St. Pete, so it, it, it's a fifty-fifty uh, proposition. But I would hope to God that would be a no. I mean, he can't do believe a it or ball. not. That's not the most. Believe it or not, that's the most, not the most preposterous thing he said that day. <laughs> what else did he say? Uh, I'm, I'm just sure. I'm just sure. About oh, that. okay. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Um, any other surprises that I am forgetting about? Andrade. Oh yeah, Andrade. Oh yeah, I never even thought about that, but yeah, you're right. Um, Okada. No. No, he can't. I was about to say, I don't even think he's been signed yet, much less, you know, you're not going to rush him into the uh, the Rumble and then send him back to NXT. That's crazy. Dude, I tell you what, though, I wonder what they're talking about. Okada going to NXT? Yeah. What the fuck are you talking No, they're not doing that. There's no way they're doing that. Look, Shinsuke went to NXT. That was a way yeah. different time. That was a different time. Look, I'm not saying he, he should go to NXT. That's just the rumor that is out there. Well, I know you're no not way. saying they should. That I mean, that would be really insulting. Uh, look, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to be Okada versus Von Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> look, <laughs> I hear what you're saying, and I agree with you totally. I'm still having a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that Okada's leaving New Japan. I watched his last couple of matches. I damn near was in tears. So, I mean, I get it. I just... I, <laughs> You know how you know how WWE is. You got to look this way. Here's the hard camera. Do it like this. Do it like that. So, would it be a surprise? Ultimately, no. Does he deserve to be there? Hell no. Dude, if I hear I mean, the that's... coin drop at a if I hear the coin drop at a WWE premium live event, that'll be my markout moment of the year. 
<laughs> I'll lose my mind. Yeah, I, honestly, I don't think they would do it like that, man. Because I mean, everybody like Shinsuke's music was different from New Japan, so somehow, some way, it yeah, would. Yeah, but be, they could still have a coin drop. The coin drop. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't think they would go with the Rainmaker, you know, gimmick. That's just me. I mean, I think they would. This is WWE. They They're want gonna, their own. He's gonna be the Shibuki Warrior. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> They're just gonna call him nunchucks. Man, no <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be a prison gimmick. No <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh god, did you see Did you see that Pete Dunn uh yes. got his name back? Yes. Finally. That was awesome. No, that was it was good. It was, I, I like Pete Dunn in general. Um, Butch had ran his course. It's time for Pete Dunn to come back. Yeah, this thank is, God. You know, it was perfect. Tyler Bay brought bringing it back out. Let them have a tag team run for a little bit. What Pete Dunn hell? in the Rumble? Oh, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I mean, they made a big deal out about that name change. And uh, what I liked about that whole thing was not that just that he got his name back, but it really showed, like, Pete Dunn, like, he showed everybody that he can be a team player and he can take chicken shit and turn it into chicken salad because that butch thing should have been terrible and it wasn't that bad. Oh, it, 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 it was good. It started off pretty shitty. I mean, but ultimately Zach's right. Like, he did end up getting over no, he as did. butch. No, he did. I was about to say, by the time that, that Brawling Brutes ended, uh, Seamus is another guy. Now that I'm talking Brawling Brutes, Seamus might be one of the guys that we didn't throw out there that is going to make a return at the Rumble. Um, I hated Butch at first, just way over the top. By the end, Butch was more than acceptable to me as a, uh, a character in WWE. Okay, you so- know what they should do is they should they should have Sheamus, Drew, and Gunther in the match. They're the final three, and then they just do a forty-five minute match oh, as the final three. He's Slater, Jinder Mahal, and McIntyre all in the Rumble together. Stop. Stop. <laughs> They're the first three. Oh, that would be huge. And McIntyre goes to the end. <laughs> he Slater breaks his impact contract to come back home. He's got kids. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Zach, I'm going to ask you to go first. Uh, your least to most, well, your top three. Actually, your third most to your most likely to win the Royal Rumble. Uh, third most uh, is absolutely, uh, and it's another one out of left field, guys. Uh, it's MJF. No, I'm joking. It's not MJF. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm going with Cody Rhodes as the number three. Um, so I don't think that's where it's going to happen. He's not going to be the double, but I feel like he's, he's in the main event scene too much for me to not pick him. Um, and then I'm going to go with... Uh, CM Punk as number two, at least, you know, maybe most likely. Um, that feels like it should be my number one, but I'm doing something that Bill is going to be unfathomable. He's not going to believe that I'm doing this, but uh, I'm, I'm going long. It's, it's, I'm throwing a Hail Mary here. I think Gunther is going to win this motherfucker. Because they always surprise him. They don't I, always surprise him. I would absolutely go nuts if Gunther wins this. Uh, Jason. That's kind of, I'm, I'm trying to manifest it kind of. That's that's funny that you said those three names because those are the names I was going to say, just not in said order. So we're going least to most. I'm gonna put Gunther at number three. Um, I'm just I'm not convinced totally he'll win. It wouldn't surprise me if he did. Obviously, he went over an hour the last year. Was the last to get thrown out before Cody Rhodes won. So I think he'll be there at the end. Drew McIntyre would probably be my fourth guy. If you wanted to say a final four, I'll go Drew Gunther as two of the four. Uh, Second most likely, I'm hedging my bets on this because I've been baiting the drum for a long, long time. But now it feels like that drum is getting worn out. I'm going Cody Rhodes as number two. I still think he should be the one to finish the story versus Roman Reigns, but it doesn't feel like it's going to happen that way because number one feels like CM Punk is going to get a late number, come in, and usurp all that has been done to build up Cody Rhodes to this point. So I have Gunther at three, Cody at two, 
and CM Punk winning the Royal Rumble at one. Uh, Jason, you make a very compelling argument uh, for Cody not winning. Um, but I already wrote it down, and I'm going to stay honorable here. I'm taking McIntyre as my third, uh, likely. I'm taking Punk as number two, and I am taking Cody as number one. Um, I just can't see them giving Punk the win right off the bat. Royal Rumble, it's just, I just, I, I don't know. I just can't see it. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm, I think you can still get Seth and Punk if that's the if that's the match they want to do without Punk winning the Rumble. Elimination Chamber's around the corner. I could also see them fucking Cody because you have been in my head for the last two or three weeks saying that Cody's not going to be there. Cody's not going to be there. Me? Yeah. Mm. Whether it's been Rock or somebody else, Cody is, is from, at least in my head, being a shoe-in for the, the Rick Mania spot. To now, I'm questioning it whether he's going to be in that spot where, you know, we've taken a year, almost two years out of my life to get it to this point. Now I'm like, I don't know if he's going to make it or not. So that's why I don't have that conviction like I, I have had in the past of Cody winning the Rumble. The Elimination Chamber still is in play if Cody doesn't win the Rumble. So, I mean, both guys have options. It's just which trigger do you want to pull first? Am I, am I crazy, Three Beer? Am, am I just thinking about this too much? Motherfucker, come off mute. Oh, God, I'm just talking this whole time. <laughs> no. So, uh, am I crazy? Yeah. No, 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 uh, not at all. Uh, I think a couple months ago, I would have thought 100% Cody's in the main event of WrestleMania. Um, things have changed a little bit. The landscape's changed. Punk came back. We got talks to The Rock. Um, there's a lot going on. I can see him not finishing the story at Mania. But, man, they are 100% behind the Cody Rhodes babyface train. He really has been the number one babyface in the company for two years. Mm. Punk said it on there, and I'm like, shit. It's only, yeah, we're three months shy of like two years of Cody Rhodes being the top baby face. Um, it's pretty wild. I know he, he was gone for a minute, but, uh, still because of that t- torn peck. But, um, but yeah, I actually I don't think he's going to be in a title match at Mania. Uh, That's crazy. But, but I don't think that he shouldn't be. I'm just saying I don't think that he will be. Um, if it even makes sense. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I feel like he should be, but. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a triple threat match at WrestleMania for Seth's belt. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I just can't see We're, Gunther winning Roman, it while he's got the Intercontinental. I just can't see it. Roman's going to be uh Roman's going to be fucking uh like at the press conference after Mania and he's going to be like super sweaty with seven belts in front of him and he's just going to be like <laughs> we're in the fifth inning. <laughs> Gunther can win. Gunther can win the Rumble. Drop hey guys, the it's the top title. of the fourth. We got plenty left. <laughs> like, God damn, we got more stories to tell. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um. Okay. So those were our 2024 Royal Rumble predictions. Man from ringside. You, you motherfucker. Had to go back in the archives to, <laughs> right. to grab that drop, to grab the outro drop. I was going to say, what was that, 2017? Jesus Christ. Uh, where are you watching the Rumble? Uh, nigga, you know, I, I got to be at work. So, I mean, I'm just I'm, I'm going to just go on radio silence right at 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. Don't look at the phone. Watching it when you get back? Yeah, immediately. You can just, just come right back and just turn it uh, on. Uh, Zach, how you watching the Rumble? Uh, I'm actually going to the cracking game tomorrow night. And so I'll be up in Seattle. So I hope I don't have to watch any on the road, but uh, I might have to watch it from uh, the passenger seat on my cell phone for a little while. But other than that, I'll be uh, drinking non-alcoholic beer in my basement. Yeah, I uh, I am playing trivia Saturday night, so I too have to go on radio silence. I'm going to come back here immediately after. And even if my brother-in-law and sister come over, the rumble's turned it on, so I got to make sure there's no spoilers. No spoilers. Hey, that. guys, give everybody 24 hours or something, or at least till the next morning, huh? No, that's... I'm just saying to the I'm, people. No, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer that spoilers is on the individual person. If you decide you want to look at Facebook just for 30 seconds... Yeah, text messages? 
Okay, well, our group is good with that. I'm, we don't I'm spoil. I'm saying in general. We don't spoil. Okay, we're good with that. Uh, the text thread's good with that. Mm. We don't spoil. No, we don't spoil. What, when was the last time we spoiled anything? I don't remember. Okay, there you go. I don't know. Bill, Bill told me there was no Santa Claus last year. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fucking lie, man. Take a look at my credit card bill, right? No shit. Uh, <laughs> Hey everybody, we got some birthdays this week. I'm gonna have to do the math on the fly, so bear with me. Honky Tonk Man is 71. Michelle McCool, 40. I bet Gunther's gonna beat that record too. <laughs> Michelle McCool is 44. Nice. Jay Briscoe would have been 40. RIP. R. I. Road Warrior Hawk, 67. RIP. Yep. Uh, evil. 37. Uh, Sasha Banks is 32. Sheamus is 46. Sonata is 36. Hardcore Holly is uh, 61. Giant Gonzalez is 58. <laughs> Becky Lynch is 37. Of the streak. Drake Maverick, a.k.a. Rockstar Spud, oh, is 41. He worked with uh, in NXT, son of a bitch. Yeah, I like it, man. Want his job back. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Yeah. We know there's tons of podcasts to listen to, so we appreciate you guys listening to our podcast. For my whole family in there. For Tender Mahal. For Murray the Murray Man Murray. For Lucha Chris. For Patriot Pat. For Brett Jagger. For Vice. For Two Beer Zach Pullman. For Jason Cornelius Bell. I am Bill Zaggy. Black Lives Matter, support your local restaurants, support your local weed dealers, call your parents, and never, ever forget the Boo the Heels. Boo, bitch!